Hey, good afternoon everybody, or good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Who knows? Could be anywhere these days, right? Okay, so sh short video. This is for the international trade class. Um, although, you know, anybody could look at it, right? So what I've done here is I've programmed into Excel a simple model that actually uh, solves equilibrium conditions as well as welfare impacts of a tariff. It's kind of a neat little model, I think. Um, it's not perfect. There are things that I would prove about it if I had the time to do so, but uh, I've put in enough time on this and, and it, it does what I think it needs to do. And I think it, it's a interesting pedagogical tool and uh, you know probably will teach you a few things about programming in Excel if you try to replicate it yourself okay so again this you know this does the welfare analysis of a tariff so you know usually in a textbook you see the bunch of lines being drawn and then I take the triangular areas and that's changing consumer surplus and all that jazz right okay so this just does that in that kind of format all right so quickly here everything over here on the right hand side this is all the machinery of the model okay um, if, if, if I was doing this for a professional presentation, which is, this is something I would, would do, uh, for that as an economist, I would just have these tables here. Um, maybe this one as well, uh, but certainly none of this in a, in a, um, PowerPoint or similar, uh, and then have these linked to all this machinery in Excel. Uh, that's not my purpose here. My my purpose is to show you how to do this so the machinery is visible. So to start off with uh, here in the G column with the beginning of the machinery, right, is I've just got a list of prices. This is just created. Now, uh, some of you will note right away that this is, you know, demand curves are, or prices you know, are generally continuous in demand curves or supply curves. That's what makes them supply curves or demand curves. Uh, that's, you know, <laughs> obviously can't do that here reasonable uh, breakdown so these are a range of possible prices they're not they're just the range of all possible prices so if you're thinking of this graphically this is your sort of y-axis okay this is quantity supplied here and this is quantity demanded okay so what are these based upon well these are just slope intercept forms for supply linear for supply and demand so this would basically be your supply function, right? And this is your demand function here in the J column. Again, they're not really supply or demand functions because they're not continuous, right? They're in discrete intervals. But yeah, that's close enough. Okay, uh, we can find these formulas. So this here, again, intercept, slope, and then grab from P. So it's Q's in terms of P's, right? So price, slope, or price elasticity, right? And then intercept, or exogenous impacts, quantity supplied. All right, I've then told Excel to grab each of these formulas. So whatever formula is here, right? I would like you, Excel, to tell me exactly that here so I know exactly what my supply conditions are and exactly what my demand conditions are. So if I were to change these, say to change the elasticity to maybe five rather than 10, okay, we can see that it's changed over here as well. Just changing it back. So you notice that a couple other things change too, right? We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so that's enough about these columns, G, I, and J. Let's take a look then at the K column. So this is the equilibrium price pre-trade or autarky, price under autarky, right? Price with no trade. And what I've done here is I've programmed Excel with an if-then statement saying, well, Excel, go ahead and take a look at columns I and J. And if it turns out that those two are equal to each other, this one and this one, then Excel I would like you to go look at the G column and put it here. Or if they aren't equal, then don't say anything. Leave the cell blank. 
And so since these two aren't equal, Excel is going to leave this blank. So if then statement in Excel, again all equations in Excel start with an equal sign. If condition, the condition, and then if true, if false. Okay. So you notice that it's leaving all these blanks. This formula has been copied down you know, throughout the whole little machinery. And here, Excel has found that those two columns are equal. They're both 25. And so it went and said, okay, they're equal. All right, cool. And grabbed this price here and spit it back out over here. Okay. So what is that? Well, Excel just found for us where supply equals demand and then told us what is the quantity and price at that point. So if you were simply solving a supply and demand problem in Excel, we'd be done right now, <laughs> okay? This problem is more complicated than that. So there's a number of additional steps we need to take. Okay, moving over then to the M column. The M column is our import demand, or it's the amount of items that will be imported at that price. So if the price were 0.25, we would import 33. And if price were 1, we would import 24. Now you'll notice that this moves to 0 at the equilibrium price. That's because there's no more demand at this price. right? So if, if local markets are if the world price is 3 and the local price is 3, then there's no reason to import. There's only a reason to import when global prices are cheaper than local prices. And it's the difference between those prices to determine how many items you're likely to import. Um, I think that's probably enough explanation there. Okay. Oh, we were given the global price here. Right, so two, we can change that if we want. We could make it three. You notice that things ratchet down then, and we ended up not going to import anything. But let's move it back to two. Okay, and then we're going to take this as given. Remember, these were given, right? Our supply and demand conditions were given. We're now going to say that global prices are two. We've already found that local prices are three, given these supply and demands. Okay. And so then the home price with trade is going to be 2, right? And <clears throat> the domestic price of imports is going to be 2. Right, now let's take a look at this column here and what it's saying. This is another if-then condition. And what we're asking at this time is we're saying if, if E6 plus E7, dollar signs recall, lock the columns and rows as we talked about in the last video on programming Excel. Okay. We're going to look at E6 and E7, so E6 here, E7. So if those sum to G10, which is our what local price, then just spit out G10. Okay. And if not, then leave it blank. Okay. So this is G10 here, right? So it turns out that this plus this is equal to this, and so it spits out that value too. So another if then. Similarly, this column is gonna is an if then condition. If N3, that is this one or this one here, is blank, blank, then leave this blank. If it's not blank, then go ahead and grab the value from M3, which is this value here, which we see spit out here. Similarly, these columns grab the values from domestic supply and domestic demand, respectively, and they're going to spit them out over here and here. Okay. All right, so that's how all this machinery works. If we change some of these input values, for example, if we put a tariff on this of one, okay, we can see then that imports fall to zero, 
Domestic supply rises, I think it was 17 before, now it's 25. Domestic demand falls from, I believe it was 27 to 25. There's changes in domestic supply and demand reflected over here. There's changes in consumer surplus. Okay, not sure why that's broken. Anyway, when you download this from the Canvas site, these will work. And I'm not, and again, I'm not quite sure why they're not working right now because they do work. And what you'll see there is that there's a gain in, so there's going to be a loss in consumer surplus. We can definitely show that by changing this back to zero. See, it's risen to 182. And we're going to see a rise in producer surplus. And we're also going to see an increase in dead weight loss from zero to, I believe, six in this case. I did it in class yesterday, and that's what it turned out to be. Oh, I see. It's because this is broken down here. Oh, why is that? Download it, take a look at it from the Canvas site, and it should be working. Like I said, it was working when I, when I downloaded it earlier. All right. Um, that's an interesting function, this, this uh, XLOOKUP function. Um, you know, you just... Uh, you know, just when you download this, sort of play around with it and see what it's doing. Uh, but anyway, so there we have all the results that we normally ask to generate in a tariff style problem. And of course, this has you know real applications, right? If we if we were asked a question like how a tax is going to affect various markets, uh, and we were asked for some specifics, this this type of model would work to to do that, right? Uh, if, if we were literally in a situation where we're, we're trying to understand how a tariff is likely to affect uh, these markets, uh, this, this sort of model would, would work to do that, right? If we, if we had good estimates, the supply relationship and the demand relationship, and we knew, uh, well, really, that's, that's all. We know how much the tariff's going to be, then, then, then that's all we really, really need to know to, to do all this analysis um, and actually generate uh, specific results uh, to the problem. Okay. So that's long enough today. Uh, thanks very much, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Take care.